What's going on all of my healthcare professionals? I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Today we're continuing on with the cardiovascular assessment and electrocardiogram like a boss series and we're going to be taking a deeper dive into our bundle branch blocks. So to begin we're really going to take a look at the right bundle branch blocks. So again, the rate, the rhythm, the P waves are all going to be normal depending on what the underlying rhythm is. Our PR interval should also be normal between 0.12 to 0.2 seconds, where the difference lies with our bundled branch blocks, whether they are right or they are left, is they are going to be wide, they're going to be ugly, they're going to be gross. They're going to be greater than that 0.2 seconds. The definition specifically for our right bundle branch blocks is a right ventricular depolarization being delayed, creating that notched appearance on the QRS. You're going to look for your right bundle branch blocks in lead V1. So what causes these right bundle branch blocks? We can look at right ventricular hypertrophy, cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, pulmonary embolism, and ischemic heart disease. They're often associated with right ventricular hypertrophy, most common in our well-conditioned adults as well as individuals under the age of 40 years. They can also be seen in elderly adults that also have an underlying coronary artery disease. So interventions with these right bundle branch blocks include oxygenation if oxygenation is not appropriate, and we may even need to consider transcutaneous pacing if they're causing a lot of problems. Talking about transcutaneous pacing, this is not fun for our patients, especially our conscious patients. So for unstable bradycardias that are less than 50 beats per minute with some kind of compromised hemodynamics. So what is that? That could be hypotension, acute altered mental status changes, shock, ischemic chest discomfort, as well as our acute heart failure patients. So what do we usually pace when we do transcutaneous pacing? Well, we do our symptomatic sinus node dysfunction rhythms, our type two second degree heart blocks, our third degree heart blocks, complete heart blocks, our new bundle branch patients that sh are showing slowing, as well as um, we're not using this for our agonal rhythms or our cardiac arrest. It shows no benefits. Cardiopulmonary CPR, if it's shockable, we're gonna shock. If not, um, we're just gonna give medications and provide CPR. So transcutaneous precautions. Conscious paced patients may require analgesia for that pacing discomfort. Remember, this is uncomfortable for our patients when they're awake because they're constantly being shocked to provide that rhythm, um, to provide that upping of that rhythm for that patient. We also want to avoid palpating carotid pulses to confirm capture. Why do we do that? Because electrical impulses can cause muscle jerking that can mimic a pulse. So if you're checking a carotid pulse, that might not be accurate because of that constant muscle jerking caused by the transcutaneous pacing. So how do we set it up? We're gonna position the pacing pads on the patient as instructed by the packaging. Normally one pad goes over the right anterior chest wall and then the left pad will go on the left midaxillary line next to the heart. We want to turn on the pacer before we do anything else. And we want to set the demand rate to 80 beats per minute or whatever the physician tells you to set it to. We also want to set the current MA output. So an increased current starting with a minimum setting and moving on until electrical capture is consistent, which would be a wide QRS and a T wave after each pacer spike, that means that our patient has ventricular pace, would be something that we want to see. Common current ranges between 50 to 80 MAs. Next, let's take a look at the left bundle branch blocks. So again, the rate, the rhythm, and the P waves are all gonna be normal depending on what that underlying rhythm is. The PR interval should also be normal and our QRS is gonna be wide. It's gonna be ugly, it's gonna be gross. It's gonna be greater than that 0.12 seconds that's considered normal. The definition for these left bundle branch blocks is left ventricular depolarization that is delayed creating a wide notched appearance of the QRS. You're gonna look for a left bundle branch block and leads V5 and V6. So what are some causes for our left bundle branch blocks? 
you're gonna see hypertension, aortic stenosis, hyperkalemia, dilated cardiomyopathy, as well as digoxin toxicity. It's less common than the right bundle branch blocks, and it also carries a less favorable prognosis. So interventions for our left bundle branch blocks include the same thing as our right bundle branch blocks. If the oxygenation is poor, we're gonna oxygenate. If they are causing problems, then we might look at transcutaneous pacing. I hope that this video was helpful in elevating your cardiac knowledge and helping you pass those exams like a boss. Make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com where you can get copies of these resources, the PowerPoints, as well as test questions that I will be including with each one of these videos within the series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions and make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye.